Hi you guys. So I have quite a few guys that ask me if a 38 Weber will work on this car or will it work on that car and so on and so forth. Um, and yes it will with, with the correct jets and, and so on. You must keep in mind the 38 Weber was designed for the 3 litre Ford um, which, is, which has got way more CFM cubic feet per minute flow through the car than what the smaller engines have. So, um, and, and, and the 38 Weber is actually a fairly small car for, for quite a big engine and it's got all kinds of uh, um, devices on that, that give it extra fuel, um, fuel enrichment systems. And for, for, for the, the 38 Weber to work on a smaller engine, we've got to block all of those off and then work purely on jetting. So, so we, we use the 227 Venturi's, which is quite nice and big for a small engine. Um, you, get, you get nice performance at high revs with it, but then we just have to sort the jetting out. So I'm gonna, I've, I've done a few uh, videos where I block off the enrichment system. So I'm going to do it with this 38 just for a client. And I'm, gonna, I'm not going to show you how I do it. I'm just going to show you what I've done. One enrichment system that the 38s, 38s have are those two little pipes there. And you can see that one is loose. And, and how, what that wor how that works, uh, if, if the pressure, negative pressure here is lower than atmospheric, it will draw fuel through. And it draws fuel through a calibrated bush. And there is the one calibrated bush. You can see that tiny little hole in there. I just block those off altogether. And you see on the other side, that calibrated bush is gone altogether. It's missing altogether. So now you can imagine... Riding without it, how much fuel that's going to draw through. It's going to overfuel like you cannot believe. And those are the holes where those, sorry, where those calibrated bushes are supposed to be drawing fuel from. And it draws fuel from, let's show you, it draws fuel, oops, draws fuel from there. And in the float bowl. So, those two holes over there. So these two I just simply block off because you don't you don't need it. This is gonna go on an 1800 engine and I'm gonna take that calibrated bush out, putty that together, closed, and then that's it, done. Second enrichment system that I block off is this this little diaphragm over here. Now that diaphragm works through a little vacuum hole over there. Um, and again at low vacuum it would, it would, at, at high vacuum, it would push down and it would push that little plunger there. And that little plunger is connected to two little ports over there. That supplies extra fuel at the bottom of your jets. Uh, don't want that. I want, I want the jet sizes that I put in there. I don't want, because there's, or, uh, again, there's calibrated bushes inside there. So I don't want that to work. Because I don't know what those sizes are. They were made for a 3 litre Ford. So what I do is I remove that and I just close off there. The third enrichment system that I disable is this. Um, this also works on vacuum. I put this back so it just uh, it looks nice. Um, but I take the diaphragm out and everything and there's a hole through there. Um, that's connected to your accelerator pump. So as the vacuum changes, it squirts, it's spring-loaded, it squirts fuel, extra fuel through, through your pump jet, and I disable that as well. So the next thing we have to do to get that flat spot out is to change the emulsion tubes. This car came with these emulsion tubes, the F50s. We're going to take the F50 emulsion tubes out and put in these very scarce F60 emulsion tubes. Um, they've got holes lower down, as you can see. So the air jet would spray air from the from the top, and 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 the fuel would emulsify at a lower level in the jet chamber. That then gets drawn up to the to the auxiliary venturis. So it takes that flat spot away. So we have to change those two to make a 38 degas run on a small engine. Change the the air jets, um, it had two 185s in. I'm going to put in two 165s. And I got through that with a lot of trial and error in the past. So you can see there, I started off with a 185 and went smaller, 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 smaller. 
till I ended up with a 165 where it ran the best. So that's why I'm putting in 165s. Lastly, that 140 mains in, I'm going to put in 155, uh, 150 mains. Uh, if they're too small, I'll put in 155s. But I'm going to put this in and then give it a test run. <laughs> David, this is your 38 digas on my 1400. Um, let's see what it does. This car be idles very high, but it's because this shaft is extremely worn. Look at that. I'm gonna have to reboost that. So, and it's got a slight flat spot. Look at that worn shaft, and that's what's causing it. Once I fix that, it's gonna run 100%. So, you, there you have it, it runs quite nice. <coughs> Just remember the, the, the jets that I've put into this car be. Um, it's not necessarily going to be correct for your vehicle. Um, it, it's, it's all a bit trial and error. You're going to have to run your car, pull the plugs, look at the color of the plugs until you get your mains and your airs right. But this is the basics. This is the basics. If you want to put a 38 on a small vehicle, this is the basics. What to do and, 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 and where to start. Um, I've run mine with these jets for quite a while and, and, and it runs fine. There's nothing wrong with it. I've, I've used more or less the same jets on my progressive carbs that I've, that I've built for my bucky and um, it works nice. Anyway, I hope this helps someone. Um, I'm going to make a separate video on the idling. The guys asked me specifically to do that. So I'll, I'll make a separate video on how to adjust the idling and all of that. Anyway, I hope this helps someone. Be safe out there.